time, time for the big boss with the hot sauce. You see, that's me. I am the heater with the heater, heater being on the record. I play the single rotten bop and cheap. Once again, let me say greetings and salutations to the entire population of this half fantastic nation. My name is the Geeter, the big boss with the big hot sauce, and you're on the air with James Brown, with Ike and Tina Turner, and also the young lady by the name of Aretha. A natural woman, 1967. The young lady by the name of Aretha Franklin, born one of six children to Reverend C. L. Franklin. It is now my pleasure to go to the Geeter phone and present to you that lady with style and soul, Miss Aretha Franklin. Hello, Aretha. Hello, Geeter. Boy, baby, you look wonderful, and you're still doing it to death. Well, thank you. You're still enjoying it, aren't you? I'm having a good time. You look really absolutely marvelous. Reed, I got to ask you this question because I think our audience would probably like to know uh, the answer to this. You were doing gospel at the very beginning with your dad and your sisters and the family, but why did you decide to go from a very successful career in gospel into pop music? Really, I just wanted to expand uh, my musical horizon. But why from jazz? and then eventually into R&B. I love music, and I love any kind of music that's good music, and so I didn't want to be limited to uh, one style or one type. You know, it's interesting, because rumor has it that your dad was not too thrilled about the fact that you're leaving uh, the gospel circuit and that you were going into the pop world. 
But there were some gospel performers who actually in the early days encouraged you. Uh, do you remember those performers? The early days would have been James Cleveland and Clara Ward. Mm -hmm. From Philadelphia. Uh, you're still living in Detroit right now, and also you run into Smokey Robinson because I spoke with Smokey, who loves you. And at the very beginning, he really, you know, was one of your biggest boosters. Uh huh. That's right. I did you wrong. Yeah. My heart went out to play, but in the game I lost you. What a Just classic stuff. Smokey and Aretha, and we're talking with Aretha. Aretha, 1960, you are now in New York City. You're recording for Columbia Records. You have a great contract with John Hammett, but it's the first time that you're in a studio where you are not recording gospel. Did you feel comfortable making that switch? Yes, I did. Um... He put some of the best musicians in the business together for me for, for those first sessions that we did. Mm -hmm. Who were some of the guys that worked on it? Uh, people like Tyree Glenn and uh, Kenny Burrell on guitar and Mew Holly on the bass mm. and uh, Ellis Larkins on piano and Stix Evans on <laughs> drums and people like that. You had the very best uh, in the business at that time. Now, you're with Columbia up until around 1965, 66. And for some reason, though, you really don't click because Hammett has you in that jazz field. It's not until you hook up with Ahmet Erdogan and Jerry Wexler at Atlantic that there is a new style and a new sound that is developed. Who comes up with that idea? Um... Actually, Jerry and myself and Ahmet Erdogan at uh, Atlantic Records. We got together. They decided that uh, I should sit down at the piano and just kind of lay out the basic format for the musicians and then arrange around that basic format. So in 67, they take you to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and they get you the best R&B musicians. They put you in the studio, and you, young lady, record your first top ten record, I never loved a man the way I love you. At that session, they tell me there was electricity. Did you know then that you had a top 10 record? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Really? You see, the interesting point here, Aretha, is the fact that when you were at Columbia, John Hammett did not have you playing on the session, but Jerry Wexler put you in a recording studio and you're playing piano. Now that's the first time that happens. Are you comfortable with that? Even more comfortable.
talk about a version. I know you know Benny King had the original version, but that is a knocked out version. Aretha, baby, you are a whaler. <laughs> when are you at your happiest? Uh, when I'm singing, when uh, I'm with my man, uh, when my children are happy and we're spending time together and not necessarily in that order. Aretha, what advice do you give to young performers today who are watching the show uh, as far as uh, the hardships that do come along uh, with this industry? What kind of advice would you give them? Well, you're going to have a lot of ups and downs. Uh, you just have to kind of roll with the punches. Yeah. What do you got to say to the fans who love you as much as I do? Just keep coming back, because <laughs> I love you. And I love you. One last question. Why have you never left Detroit? Well, because my family's there. And uh, most of my friends and the people that I grew up with are there. And that's where my roots are, and that's home for me. Aretha, thank you, my baby, for sharing. Thank you, Jerry. The young lady by the name of Aretha Franklin, absolutely marvelous. Talking about Detroit and Aretha, let's go back to Detroit right now, to the year 1963. Holland, Dozer, and Holland, they're working for Barry Gordy. They give Martha Reeves and the Vandellas one of the first top ten records of their career with a song called Quicksand. I now present to you the Geeter Gold Dancers. is going to be really what Motown was all about. Motown records in the early 60s, when you talk about dance material, they were the very best. And when you talk about the first female group to really do their thing, you talk about Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. For you. I want to take you back from 1963 to 1960. A young lady teams up with her husband on a recording label called the Sioux Recording Label. The lady's name is Tina. The last name is Turner. I present to you the fantastic Tina Turner. Won't somebody please, please tell me what's wrong. Like you do when he's such a good man. Miss, you got me smiling, I should be ashamed. And got me laughing when my heart is in pain. Oh, now, now I see a fool. Cause I'll do anything you want me to do. Now tell me how to do it. You know you're in love. One more time, you got the pain. You hear me say, hey, hey, hey. You take me to the right.
71, and of course, when you talk about a cat that really came a long way from when he was hanging out in Macon, Georgia, you talk about James Brown. I want to let you see right now how our Geeter Gold dancers get down to Mr. James, the Godfather of Soul, and we're gonna have a funky good time. Let's take him up, friend. One of the great musicians, and the great thing about James is that when you would see him on stage with the band, that's exactly what you would hear on record. Same sound on stage and also on recording. Let me now take you from the 70s back to the year 1967, when my man does a song called Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. Former. Guess what? I got to thank not only James, but Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, and of course you folks out there, along with the Geeter Gold Dancers. Because as I glance at the big TikTok on the Tower Power Clock, as all good things must come to an end, that's it. So must the show. Same time, same place, next week. Until then, the Geeter, the big balls with the big hot sauce with a reminder. Remember, at all times, you keep on rocking, because you only rock once. Hey, hey, hey.